So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the, the, the capacitor contributor to the exhilarator carbonator. And then that, that, that should be it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on loving you. Mr. J, is there anything else you need before I go home? I mean, I'm about to get off. Just let me, just wonder if, if it's, you need, do you need anything? You need something? You know what, while I'm thinking about it, you know what? Run, if you can for me. I ain't, I ain't trying to impose. But if you run down the street at the end of the quarter, go give me a salad. Salad, uh, like like any particular salad? Just, you got something in mind? Oh, no, no, no. Ain't, ain't a salad just a salad. A salad just a salad. Okay. All right, so wait a minute. You trying to say can't nobody put no cheese on a salad? No ranch dressing? I say, sure, you you can do that, but let's just let's just try something well different. Let's expand. Let's let's explore. Besides, now a really interesting salad before meal can really set the tone, the atmosphere, the whole dining experience. And it also can be well for lunch but for sure it doesn't have to be just a salad my salad has to take me somewhere okay so what are we making right here patouche salad and it starts off with a leftover pita or next day pita so this is whole wheat pita right here. And so let's just get into the whole fatouche part. Like it's the like um, the translation, I think, I believe it's Arabic. It just means crumbs. So it's basically, in essence, it's a, it's a bread salad, but we're gonna use whole wheat pita right here. And I'm just, break, I'm just breaking it up into little pieces. Okay, just breaking it up to little pieces. Then I got a couple of bigger pieces here. And then I do have some triangles here or the whole wheat pita. But the whole thing is to get, you know, intimate with your own pita. Don't be going out and getting some pita chips, cutting corners, half stepping. Get some whole wheat pita. I mean, you, I didn't make it myself, but I'm just saying, you know, start organic. Start from the beginning. So this is my whole wheat pita. And what I'm going to do is going to drop this in the oil, you know, olive oil for a minute. And then uh, you guys are going to see the rest of what happens with this patouche salad. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, burning, burning. Give me oil. All right, so that's the olive oil in there. Swirling around. See, it got a little shimmer on it. That tells me it's high enough. You don't want to go too, too high heat with it. And so I'm just, what I'm just going to do is just drop in my crumbs, my pita. Turn it up a little bit. It's going to get a little sizzle on it. I'll throw in a few smaller crumbs here. Just like that. Keep in mind, we're using olive oil. We're not using vegetable oil. We're not, I don't wanna crowd the pan either. We're not using vegetable oil. We're using olive oil. This is 100% extra virgin olive oil, what we call EVOO, EVOO. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning, burning, burning. Give me oil in my lamp. Okay, he got crisp, he crisp, he crispy, he crispy, and he got crisp, oh, he almost there, so yeah, guys, just let, you know, let them crisp up in that olive oil, you're not deep frying, you're just kind of like sauteing down, and just, hear that, who they're knocking at the door? 
Here you go. All right. So here's our finished crumbs right here. But first, this is where we started. All right, just a regular whole wheat pita. Now we here. First we was here, now we here. All right, we dropped that in that oil, gave him a little toss. Somebody somebody at home probably saying, man, that, that, that look burnt. Okay, this is not burnt because keep in mind, people, we used the whole wheat pita and not the regular pita. Let me just give one of these a taste here. That's the crunch. That's the crunch right there. That's what's up. That's the crunch. That's the fatouche crunch. All right, so before I wrap it up and, you know, set it to the side, there was a little salt right there. Then, of course, uh, freshly ground black pepper. Y'all see where I'm going with it? You ain't see this yet, though. Sumac. Now, sumac is a, uh, a spice that, uh, I don't know, it, it favors uh, lemon pepper, okay? But you don't want to use lemon, lemon pepper. I don't want to use lemon pepper. I want to use something. And, and as far as getting something like this, now you're probably going to have to go to a specialty store and get a sumac. I'm going to pour a little in my hand and get a little taste. So what it is, is just basically a, uh, comes from a shrub. Okay. Asia, Africa, East Asia, Africa. And let me get a little taste here. Okay, that's it. I'll put that on my pedal. Put that on my pedal just a little bit. I ain't gonna use all of that. And then uh, go ahead and wrap this up. Still on my warm pita. Toasty pita. Let me just taste it. Let me just taste one. It just did what it was supposed to do. Okay. Wrap that up. Good to go. Okay, so I got my pre-washed. Let me clarify right here, y'all. Ain't no need to baptize salad greens. You ain't got to do all that. Just wash and spin. Just shake the water off. Shake the water off. You you ain't got to. You ain't got to. You ain't got to do all that. So with my romaine lettuce, notice this is not like um, iceberg lettuce. I can do this. Roll up. Just like the collard green. Oh, I'm gonna show y'all something in a minute about romaine lettuce. It's not, it's not like iceberg, but look familiar. Almost like the, almost in the collard family. So I have some chopped down like that. So I got some tech. Then not so much. Over here is like, oh okay, that's that's decadent. But then romaine has another part to it. The kind of stalky part to it and I kind of want to have that in there for the simple fact that um you know I just need some texture just need something to crunch on so romaine lettuce is generally found in your Caesar salads and whatnot so you want to pick up something that looks like this or you can just chop him off there and go in for the jugular come in here Nice green romaine lettuce. I'm gonna show y'all something in a minute. It's almost like a flower. Isn't the romaine beautiful? That's beautiful. So it's got those light green parts, and it's got the white parts. A little bit more. Let me show y'all something. That's how it look. All right. See how that look? Look at that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Ooh, boy, look at that tall salad. Ain't even done yet. That look good. Ain't even done yet. So we'll go to our English cucumber, which just means that this cucumber don't got no seeds in it. All right. So I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to cut off the ends here. Okay. And maybe like right about here, right about there. And then that's my cucumber. All right. Okay. That's, that's easy. That's easy. What, what's going to be so hard about chopping this up? So I'm gonna show y'all a little something. Just cut down here a little bit. Shave him off. Come around. One revolution. Shave him off. Come around another revolution. Shave that off. 
come down here on that side, shave that off. So then when I do, I put my, cu my English cucumber on the side, shave kind of close and thin. Y'all see what I did right there? Y'all see what I did right there? Like, oh, man, that's them cucumbers that be in the restaurant. See what I did right there? So then you get that little, you know, that little, see that right there? That little pinwheel thing going on. If you don't feel like doing all that, like, man, Carl, you doing too much. I, ain't, I don't, I don't got time. Like that. Can we just cut up the cucumber? So that's that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna slice them into half moons, half moons. You can stack them, half moons. Stack a few more, just like a deck of cards, half moon. Go to the side. That goes into my salad. All right, so that cucumber that I just put in there is already getting infused with the salad greens. So then I got my cucumber in there. I got my uh, romaine lettuce right there. Then I got some Roma tomatoes or plum tomatoes. Okay, just come in here. Come right, let me bring that over so y'all can see. Bring that over. And I'm just gonna do uh, this little dice right here. Let me bring this, let me bring him over. So I'm just gonna dice up some uh, plum tomatoes. And you can just keep doing that for like the next three or four tomatoes. So you have a nice bunch. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Okay, that should be enough um, tomato. All right, you can use more if you, you know, you're a tomato type person. But uh, that's enough fresh tomato in there. So now we're, we're still building this salad. So then I want to come over here to, uh, we talked about this before, the long green onion or the scallion. Cut off the ends. Okay. You guys good? I just beheaded you, but you, you good? So the long green onion. Notice I'm chopping the whole onion here. If you want to come in closer and thinner, you can, depending on the size of your knife, you know, the sharpness of your knife. I'm just, I'm gonna put the whole green onion here. This is about like five stems or five stalks. Sometimes uh, green onion, it's kind of like, you know, they, they're stuck together, sort of like, like this, consider that one, two, three, four, five. You know what I'm saying? All right, cut him down a little bit more. That's my white onion. All that goes into the pool. Man, this salad is so integrated. So all this goes into the pool. All right, the lovely radish. A uh, little bit of radish. Look how thinly, paper thin I got that, okay? If you can get, get in real close with your knife, all right, come in here real close. Paper thin, okay? I ain't trying to mess up my nails. I ain't trying to mess up my set. I ain't trying to mess up my nails. Come in here real thin, okay? So unlike the cucumber, the radish, get that paper thin. I don't, I don't want to have too much in there. And the thing that radish lends to this salad is like a bite, like a, what's that? What's that in the back of my mouth? All right, give them a little dice a little bit. Scoop them up. Y'all in the pool too. And one more chop. Maybe one more, paper thin. All right, check that out, okay? And in a few minutes, I'm gonna give this a little toss. That's everything in there, everything in there. That's, this is an all skate, all skate, all right? Ooh, that's mint, that ain't a mint. 
is, is bursting up here. So I got fresh mint, all right? And then fresh uh, Italian flat leaf parsley, okay? So I don't want to have too much mint, but the thing that mint does is it um, it puts like a like a freshness in, in the salad. It's like, what is that? But it, it should be in the background, not the foreground, but it should be in the background like, this is refreshing. And, that, and that's the whole thing about the salad. It's like, this is refreshing. So I don't want to use too much mint, okay? Maybe that's like a fourth cup right there. I'm not going to use that whole stalk. And then with the parsley, okay, I'm doing it this way. It's up to you guys how you want to do it. But a little bit more parsley, so maybe like a cup of parsley. And then what I do is I take this to the food processor and get it all, you know, mulched down. So you won't even be, you won't even be seeing those leafy parts in there. Everything is going to be mulched in, and it's going to be so incorporated to the salad. You're like, oh my God, what is, what is, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Okay, come in there. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. I just mulched down, processed down that mint and that parsley. Okay. I wish y'all could smell, have smell a vision. How fresh that is. So I put that in. Oh boy. I do is I give it a little toss. Somebody in the room is like, we gonna we gonna eat it like we gonna eat it like that. No oh, man, you gotta have a you gotta have a vinaigrette to go with this. Okay, everything is incorporated. It's a very complex salad. You got the radish in there, cucumber, all that in there. Very complex. So all right, let's do this uh, salad dressing and we out. All right, so let's do our dressing, okay? So our dressing is like a, uh, a vinaigrette, all right? So if it's well incorporated, then it's like you taste something on every leaf. So what I want to do is I want to start with some really good oil, EVOO, extra virgin olive oil, maybe like one fourth cup, and then one whole lemon that I want to squeeze in there. That provides a little bit of the freshness and the citrus. And what I'm doing is just squeezing right into my hand. And the seeds come right into my hand or fall through my fingers. I get another. One. This is a whole lemon. If you want to use lime, you can use lime too, but I do prefer to use a lemon. Ooh, this one's a juicy. It's juicy. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so that's it for my uh, lemon. I don't want to get those seeds in there. I'm just going to set those to the side. I'll get to those later. And then I'm going to add, this is going to sound strange, y'all. I'm going to add just a little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon, where that come from? How that go in here? And a little bit of allspice, not too much. We ain't trying to make jerk salad. Then oregano, a little bit of oregano, and then there's that sumac again. Um, oh man, it smells good. Usually it doesn't have an aroma, but I'm smelling something from that right there. I'm gonna give it a little, oh, I'm sorry, I have to put in the, the regular guys. Freshly ground back black pepper, freshly ground salt, Get that a stir. Oh, man, Carl, that don't look like enough. I mean, look, this ain't that kind of salad that you do on this. It ain't, it ain't that, we ain't, this is not what this is right here. All right. Get a good whisk. And bring my salad over. And then we're going to incorporate everything. It'll be good. All right, here's that vinaigrette. Just going to pour that on. Pour that on. Yes, it's enough. Yes, it's enough. Gotta stop slathering our, our greens with so much sauce, man. Okay. They get, they get all incorporated. Oh, yeah. And 
then what we did at the beginning with the uh, pita, that's, that's what makes it the patouche right there. It's kind of like, uh, what did you say? On a Mediterranean crouton? Maybe a little more. I'm sure y'all can hear the crunch. Now, if you wanted to, you could add stuff like feta and whatnot, but we're just gonna keep it simple today. So we get the point across. We give another little toss here. Just lift up. Let the vinaigrette coat. Let that mint get in there. Let that parsley get in there. Let that oregano get in there. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. That's fresh. So fresh and so clean, clean. All right, let's give this a little taste. A little more oregano. You gotta do that. Some black pepper. Maybe just a little drizzle of olive oil. Okay. Just to glisten it up. Let's give this a taste. Everything's in there, the tomato, the radish, the fatouche. Let's see. Mmm. Mmm. Pick it up the mint. That's a big leaf right there. Pick it up the mint. The oregano, the pepper. Mm hmm. Every leaf is coated. Mm hmm. That's what I'm talking about right there, man. Man, that seems flavor right there. Y'all try this. That's what I'm talking about. I just gotta ask, do holiday fruit cakes even exist anymore? I mean, somebody out there like, hey man, why you gotta get down on fruit cake, man? I like fruit cake. Remember, they were heavy, thick, solid, masses of congealed nuts and candied fruit. And fruit sometimes gets a bad rap. Like if it's in a cake or a can, there's there's bound to be well sugar. You love fruitcakes? No, Chris, I, I, I ain't on fruitcakes today. I'm still on salad, but no, we, we all have fruitcakes right now. So I'm on salads today. Um, maybe just in the last 30 years, fresh fruit started being kind of trendy in salads, okay? So what I want you guys to do is check out this flavor profile collision right here when nature's sugar in citrus meets salad greens meets, what is that? Like. I'm like I'm like Lisa right now. She be like, what's that? What's that sound? What is that sound? Did you hear that sound? I hear a sound. Do you hear a sound? Hey babe, I heard hmm. my name. Yeah, okay. Well You need me? You need me to do something? Yeah, uh not just right now. Right now. Right now, guys, what I'm doing is um this is of course, you know. Grapefruit is round, so what I want to do is cut off the ends right here, so I can work with something in case I want to put it, you know, flat down, and I and I definitely want to do that. So what we're making here, and what this is the beginning of, is uh, a salad with fennel, a spring salad with fennel and citrus. Now I know those combinations, are like man, what is what, what could be going on with that? But we want to start out with a nice uh, grapefruit. And I already have a, I have a grapefruit here already peeled. 
and I have an orange already peeled here. So the only two citrus we're dealing with is grapefruit and orange. Hmm, interesting. So when I'm cutting down on the skin here, I'm gonna come like this, sort of like concave, so I have something like this. If you notice, citrus fruits, like grapefruit and orange, have what we call pith. And this part here is the bitter part. So the, the most that I can get off of the fruit, the better. Because I don't want I don't want anything bitter in the salad. Even though grapefruit uh, has some bitter profiles, uh, I'm not gonna worry about that because we got some other stuff to go with it that will complement the grapefruit flavor. So I don't have to do the whole thing. I just want to give you guys an idea of how that should look. Again, I don't want to have that pith in there. And then I have another grapefruit here. Set him over here. And then I have another orange. So I'm gonna do two grapefruit and then uh, two orange. Okay, so I can do these citrus slices a day in advance, put a refrigerator. I do want to keep them separate from all my other things like the garlic and the fennel. But look at here, y'all, with this slicing going on. Get in here, Chris. Look at that, okay? Nice little thin medallions like that. Uh, so my advice would be using like a serrated edge. That way you cut right through that finicky citrus. Took the uh, peel off of there already. Had virtually no pith going there. And that's my orange. And then you can keep going if you want to. Then I go over to my grapefruit. As I'm plating over here. Go up to the grapefruit. And if I, and I mentioned smell of vision earlier. If you, if you guys could just smell the bursting of citrus flavor right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that, how thin that is. So use that serrated knife. Go ahead and plate right here. I, I, I guess I, I guess if I didn't even want salad, I just like, let me, let me just get some of that fruit up off of there. Let me just get some of that fruit. Okay, that's refreshing. Okay, something like that, all right? All right, so wherever you're viewing this, wherever your viewing area is, your dining room, your kitchen, your living room, your family room, wherever, I mean, you you probably like, you know, I, I see the orange and I see the grapefruit, but father, what is what is this back here? <laughs> so this is a uh, fennel, all right? And fennel's real cool because it's got these real pretty fronds on here. So you don't need that part. Actually, you can use this like in garnishes and stuff like that. But look how springy that is, the, the whole frond thing, okay? The whole Florida thing going on right there. I just wanna cut that part off. Again, you can use that for garnish, but we're not gonna use that today. So fennel comes from the, uh, the onion leek family. I'm gonna shave off the bottom here. It's a little tough part, so we're not gonna use that. Maybe I can come in a little bit more. All right. Well, with fennel, coming around, and just real thin slices again, okay? It's almost like an onion, and you're probably like, wait, wait, wait. What is the, the flavor of fennel? Fennel, you usually find uh, fennel flavor in sauces like uh, like gravies, say for instance, a spaghetti sauce. Okay, fennel is probably in there. Or in your pizza topping. It has this, uh, this licorice-y taste to it, um, almost like anise. All right, and if you're not a big fan of licorice, I wouldn't be afraid to you know, still use this because everything complements each other. This is like the perfect storm of flavors right here. So that's my uh, thin anise, or I'm sorry, my thin fennel. We took care of the fronds. Maybe I might want to use that for a garnish or something like that, but that's all I need, okay? That's my fennel. So in your onion aisle, in your onion section, you'll see all the onions. I mean, I've gone on and on and on about different onions. The green onion, 
the red onion, the white onion. So the shallot looks something like this. And the shallot has a much more milder flavor than would say, uh, than, than a red onion. It's got a much more milder fl flavor than an onion. And so when you peel it, then it has this like purple shoe to it. And they get ready to do my scallion. It's like that, sort of like on the inside. Same thing that I did with the, uh, the fennel. Come in real close. Nice thin slices. Because the thinner you are with your slices, the more in the background the shell of the bee. Again, it's not a real strong flavor at all. Not as strong as a, a white onion. It's not sweet like a yellow onion or a Spanish onion. And, but I'm really digging about it is that, that it's got a pretty color in there. A little purplish in there. That is so spring, man. That is so spring. Look at that. Man, look at God, man, with these colors, man. Can't nobody else do that but him. All right. A few more uh, thin slivers. I mean, look at the, the purple and the green. I can't take it no more. I can't take it. Okay, so now we're gonna build this vinaigrette. It's sort of similar to the previous vinaigrette that we did earlier. So I have my olive oil, 100% EVOO, and that's about maybe uh, a fourth cup, okay? Just eyeball stuff. After a while, you know, you just begin to eyeball stuff. You cook it so much, you're like, okay, I, that's a fourth cup. And then I'm gonna use the juice of one whole lemon so I just let the juice fall through my hands and then I catch the seeds. And here's the other part of that lemon. Catch the seeds. You know, uh, a couple of seeds get in there and you can always fish them out. Ain't no big deal, ain't no major. You at home, okay? So that's the juice of one lemon, like a fourth cup of uh, olive oil. That's, that's a big bowl for four seeds, but I just want to get them out of the way. Get that a little swish, just kind of incorporate. Then the garlic that I diced up and minced goes in. So like two cloves of garlic, mince it up in my mortar and pestle. Okay, keep incorporating. Then I got sumac, all right? That's that peppery, kind of a lemon peppery, uh, yeah. Taste of sumac, one teaspoon of that. That goes in. One teaspoon of dried oregano, that goes in. One teaspoon of salt, nah, let's just do a half teaspoon. That's kosher salt. With some freshly ground black pepper. I like a lot of pepper, I do. At least I'm gonna need some pepper. I know. I'm getting low on pepper. You get low on pepper. Mm. All right. So I just made a vinaigrette right here, guys. You do not have to go around to a store. I'm looking for, can somebody help me with the vinaigrette? I'm looking for vinaigrette. No, you, you, I, I just did it right here, all right? A little darkish in color, but that is quite all right because we got that sumac in there and it's starting to, you know, starting to paint the, the uh, vinaigrette. Nice little kind of like uh, pinkish, cranberry-ish type hue, okay? And this, let's build our salad. All right, so we're ready to build this salad, everybody. Okay, I got uh, this spring mix right here. You can you can get that at the you know the supermarket. The spring mix. Uh, it's got a little chard in there. It's got a little what looks like radicchio in there. Uh, arugula, sort of like the you know the bitters, like the bitter greens. Now you can do this with spinach or kale, but just go for that spring mix, and uh, you can start from there at least. Okay, so let's build. All right, so I have um, a couple of fennel front, fennel. Just gonna throw that in. The shallot that we sliced up really thin earlier. Okay, give that a toss. Don't want everything to be incorporated. Okay, 
So just kind of like eyeball it, like, okay, maybe this one. A few more shallot. A few more shallot in there. Maybe a few more fennel in there. I haven't put any vinaigrette on there. I just want to make sure everything is incorporated. So when I plate it, it looks like the way I want it. Then I pulled out of the refrigerator those uh, razor thin oranges. So I keep them in those medallions. Or if you want to cut them into moon shapes, half moon shapes, you can do that. One, two, three. Grapefruit. One. Two, if they tear up, that's okay. Three, one, good. one orange, one grapefruit. Just kind of, again, just what, what I like to see, the, the color, what I like to see. And then the ratios are all, all up to you. All right, so that's my orange, my grapefruit. And then I just, just want to coat my dressing, okay, with my vinaigrette. After this Daniel fast, y'all, y'all can eat this with some, you know, some chicken, some broiled chicken, some grilled chicken. For now, oh yeah, like look how it's coating. Okay, I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm telling you, when you when you start enjoying sauces this way, then you you've arrived, you've graduated. Okay, you have you have come and you have. Come out, come away from this. We ain't doing that no more, all right? All right, that looks good. It smells good too, okay? So we're gonna... Mmm. Mmm. Mwah.